Good morning everyone and welcome to our Friday Facebook Live session. Today um, I have Margaret with me from the People's Friend team. We also have Carly in the room so if you hear a voice and you can't see anybody it's Carly. Um, so it's really nice to see you all with us today and our subject for today is tea caddies. Now just in case there's anybody out there who doesn't know what a tea caddy is, it is a tin in which you would keep your supply of tea. Um, if you're like me and you get through lots and lots of tea in a week, then you want to have a very big and robust tea caddy to keep it all in. But the tea caddy is something that has a long history with the People's Friend. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And Margaret knows quite a bit about the history of the People's Friend. So she's going to keep me right if I get any of my facts wrong. Um, so first of all, the tea caddy is the prize that we give away each week if somebody has a letter printed in the magazine. And this example here is the tea caddy that you will actually win if you get a letter printed on the letters page on Between Friends. You can't buy this tea caddy, um, so the only way to get one is to win it. And I know there are some people who have been trying for many years to get their hands on a tea caddy and have not quite managed it. I also know, I recently met a lady whose mother has won 12 tea caddies over her long letter writing career. So I think that's probably a record. If anybody out there has won more tea caddies than 12, we would love to hear, wouldn't we? Absolutely, yes. that's quite astounding. So Margaret, how long do you think we've had the tea caddy as the prize on the People's Red Letters page? Well, the earliest time I've seen it um, is probably oh, the late 19th century. I wouldn't even say it. Yeah, so well over a hundred years. Absolutely, yeah. well over. But I haven't got an actual date, but yeah. I've seen a picture of one mm -hmm. and it's very sweet. So. But isn't that amazing that over a hundred years on, people still want the same yeah. prize that, that they, they valued so much then? Absolutely. Now today we have a few little treasures from our archives, don't we, that we've been allowed to show people on Facebook. So. This one, I think I'm right in saying, is the oldest tea caddy in our collection. Yes, it is. Do you want to talk yes, a little sure. bit about I'll it? Put it nearer the screen so you can see. It's it's very bent and battered, much like myself. <laughs> <laughs> and on the front, it says a present from the people's friend, the favourite home journal. So that maybe helps to date it. Um, on the top, there's a picture of a fiddler. I think it may be. The renowned fiddler Neil Gow, and again that may help us. He stay. came from Perthshire, didn't he? He did. Yes. He's local, yes, so that's right. But we love it. Yes. Um, and inside, Angela has just discovered something that may help, and I can get it open. <laughs> that's it. And well, you won't see it, but we've just noticed um, the maker's name of the tin. So. We're going to be on a little detective hunt, see if we yeah, can... Yeah, do you want to read out, see if anybody knows anything yes, about it? Yes, it says, Hudson, Scott and Sons, Carlisle, England. Yeah. So that's, so that's a bit of information we didn't have before. No. But you think this one came from around the 1920s, I don't you? I think so, yes. yes. And you also know an amazing story, don't you, Margaret, about huh. a tea caddy from our archives that may just have involved a tea caddy like this one. Do, shall I tell it? Oh, why not? Okay, <laughs> here is our favourite tea caddy story of, of the whole friend history. So this is a letter that somebody wrote into the friend, isn't it? It yes. is. And we published it in 1929. 1929. Yeah. And it came from a man who said, Dear editor, many years ago I was an assistant, a photography assistant, to a professor who was a botanist. And we were out in I think it was the Congo. I think it was the Congo. Deepest, yes. deepest Congo. The deepest Congo. Um but he said we were there to collect fauna, uh, species of flora. He said the professor was really against shooting animals. This was not a game drive, this was not a safari. So he forbade us to have any big guns. We only had little pop things to, to shoot game for our meals. Well, one day he said I went out into the bush to see if I could find something for tonight's dinner. And he said off I went going through Suddenly there was a crashing through the trees behind me and when I turned around to my horror there was a big bull rhinoceros heading straight at me. Well all I had was this little tiny gun that would be no good whatsoever. The only thing I could do was run. He said so run I did and because rhinoceroses can't, rhinoceroses <laughs> can't move very easily I ducked from left to right 
and left to right to try and weave my way away from him. And I was just getting ahead, but still he was coming on when suddenly I fell headlong on something that was poking out of the ground and it went chink and down I went. Well, I thought that was the end of me. But then at that moment, a little Frenchman came out from behind a tree with a pith helmet and a big elephant gun and he shot the rhino. So I was saved, my life was saved. Well, later that night, he said, I was curious to know what had nearly cost me my life. So with a couple of bearers, I went back out into the bush and there on the ground, poking up, was a very battered, rusted tin. And you could make out the words, a present from the peoples. <laughs> now, how did it get there? Why <laughs> was it there? One of these. <laughs> I, I think it could well have been. In the one. Congo. In the Congo. <laughs> and it nearly crossed that man life. It's got to be a winner. That, that is the best tea caddy story. I hope yeah. he got a tea caddy for writing. He did. <laughs> I assure you he did. So oh. that is, makes, it still makes us laugh. It does. It? That is the best oh, yeah, story. No. The best reader letter in our archive, I think. If anybody thinks otherwise, please let us know. You might even win a tea caddy for telling yes, us. Absolutely. That's amazing. <laughs> that one. Yeah, that's amazing. It's just a we, brilliant story. We have had letters, letters like, um, oh, I came across the people spend in a, a, wait, a dentist waiting room in Japan. That was yes. another one. So yes. they often mm -hmm. like to tell us where they've they found the friend. So do, yes. do, do And apparently in the early days, a lot of copies went out to China because of all the missionaries who were out in China. Yes. So um, I I know that um, Annie S. Swan, who was very prolific in the, the First World War years, um, she spoke about um, corresponding with missionaries in China who had the friend sent out to them. So we did that's spread good. it far and wide. We, did. Men, didn't we, we? did. So that's the, that's the earliest tea caddy yes. in our collections. But Margaret, this is your favourite one, isn't it? Would absolutely. you like to tell us May about, about, about this one? Thank you. This is absolutely my favourite. Isn't it beautiful? It's stylish. It's made of pewter. And it looks so modern. It does, it's doesn't just it? gorgeous. And the embossed bit yeah. on the top is lovely. On the top it says, People's Friend. This was during the war years. And it went to Second World War. Second World War, sorry. <laughs> um, and what makes this one special to me is this is the tea caddy that was given out without tea because, of course, it was rationed. So you got the tea caddy, but you didn't get any tea with it. But I feel I would like that on my shelf today. I think it looks fantastic and it's still mm. so lovely. We've not cleaned that or no, anything. That is, is how it looks. So It's beautiful. Our favourite. Yes. I also brought along a little teaspoon, well, tea caddy spoon, mm -hmm. and it says a people's friend gift. Again, this would have been a prize, I think. Yes. Now, when do you think that would date from? Do we have any idea at all? Nope. <laughs> That's the short answer. I really, really don't. It is obviously silver. Um, there's a hallmark, oh, but yeah. that would help date it. It would, wouldn't it? We could we <sighs> ask somebody that knows. We wish our predecessors things. had dated things a little. Better, I know. But 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 that's the fun. <laughs> tea has been a real theme in the People's Friend, hasn't it? Since the very early days. Mm -hmm. um, people, um, to begin with, in the early issues, um, talked about how unusual and rare tea was as a luxury for ordinary people. Yes. Um, and then during the war years, how difficult it was to come by. Um, and we've had lots of tea related prizes over the years yes. because we at one point gave away a whole tea service, didn't oh, we? Oh, we did, and it was beautiful. A China tea service. Can just you imagine gorgeous. trying to post that to the winner? Which is just incredible. Lovely. But, yeah. but I think you're right. The, the drinking of tea, and, and we know this especially in Britain, it, it's bound up with our lives. Yes. We, the first thing we do if someone's sad or has mm -hmm. bad news, put the kettle, kettle on. Yes. And it's tea. I mean, I know a lot of us are coffee drinkers, mm -hmm. but there's something about the ritual yes. of tea making. And the sharing of a pot of tea as well is, yes. is a lovely thing. And even um, last week when we, you and I were lucky enough to meet some of our readers at, at the Warner Holiday at Mid Hall, um, that was one of the highlights, wasn't it? People yes. sitting down for tea in the okay. afternoon. Um, together and just sharing a chat and yes. some, some cake. So um, we had a lovely session. Oh, it was, it which was, was, was really nice. Yeah. Which brings me on to our latest tea caddy, yes. which is this absolutely beautiful um, little silvery tea caddy, which has been produced specially for the People's Friend 150th anniversary. As you can see, it's got our 150th logo on the front. It's got some lovely um, thistles embossed all the way around it in a nod to our Scottish heritage. Um, on the back, 
it's got a little story about the people's friend which says um we were founded in 1869 um which is really nice and then inside there's this lovely lid again embossed and then we've got some tea which is made by Brodies of Edinburgh um a very well-known tea maker inside tea bags not um, loose tea in a nod to uh, more modern taste but we were talking about this today and we were saying it's absolutely lovely we adore the design oh, yes. but that would probably only keep the people friend team going for maybe an afternoon <laughs> we do drink a lot of tea Less of was cake. <laughs> and margaret also noticed that on the bottom there's even some instructions on how to make your perfect brew yes. So the great thing about this tea caddy is that anybody can have one. You don't have to write a letter and tell us to win this one because you can buy one as part of our celebrations. When we were planning what to do for our 150th, one of the things we said was, let's make a tea caddy that anybody can have because we've had so many requests for them over the years. So if you haven't already bought your anniversary tea caddy, you might want to pop along to our shop online um, which is at www.thepeoplesfriend.co.uk. If you click on shop, you will see the tea caddy. It's £11, I think, isn't it? Um, it costs £11. You can buy it in a two pack as well. And also, we will send it anywhere in the world if you want to order it from us. So, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, anywhere else, you can still buy this tea caddy. It will cost you a little bit more for the postage and the packing, but you will still have a little piece of People's Friend history on your kitchen shelf. Mm -hmm. I think they're gorgeous, aren't they? I the do. new ones are so pretty. And I think it, it's lovely that we can share this this momentous year yes. with, with, you know, with this with this thing. It's That's just right. gorgeous. And once you've drunk your Brodie's tea, you're going to fill it up with other tea bags. Yes, of course. Yes. Or loose tea. You or know loose a lot tea. of people still That's like right. loose tea. And this one actually, the, the one that you can win um, from the Between Friends page, does actually have a packet of mm -hmm. loose tea in it. It's so nice that one, isn't it? Yes, it's so so lovely. It's such a pretty design and a really um, robust. Yeah. This is for a serious tea drinker. Look ah. at all the tea you can fit yeah. into that. Yeah. I think what amazes me is sorry, um, how strongly we feel about the perfect cup of tea. We know yes. that it can spark off huge debates about yes. the pot and milk first, milk yes. after. I have black tea and again, it needs to be a certain strength because yes. that's all you're tasting. Mm, just that's right. Tea. There's no sugar yeah. or milk. That's I take my tea black as yeah. well. I don't like it too weak, but I don't like it too strong mm. either. There's a very definite yeah. in-between point. And my morning tea is always made in a teapot. The rest of the day, it's a mug oh. with the tea bag dumped in it because of I'm at work, that's necessity. But in the morning I make a pot of tea and I drink two mugs out of my pot of tea every mm -hmm. morning. Um, and the second one is always the perfect temperature by yes. the time you finish the first one. Oh, just have a little look at these comments. Oh, we've got comments. Yeah. So oh, we do, we've got lots, Zealand. haven't we? I remember the days of loose tea, we don't see it around a lot. That's from Kimberly Summers. Mm. Uh, you can still find it, Kimberly. Hello, Lisa. They travelled to Sri Lanka earlier this year and walked to a tea, a tea plantation. Ah, I wonder mm. if that's our friend Lisa Ashton from the Winnie Mabasso Foundation. I think it might well oh. be. Hi Lisa. Good day to Barbara from Western Australia. Hi, Barbara. And Pamela in Kiora in New Zealand. Oh, hi Pamela. Wow. We've got lots of New Zealand people joining hi. us today. How lovely. I wonder what that time of day it is at. I think it might be their evening. Yes. Good evening. Um, well, Good evening. hopefully some of you have a cup of tea as you're watching this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Auntie, I had a little look while Ooh. we were talking about the Hudson, Scott and Sons. Mm -hmm. Now, they were a very big um, company who made metal tins. They were renowned ah. for making metal tins and they made them for Jack Daniels oh. and Cadbury oh. and their collectibles. Ah. So, ah. Oh, you might want to take this one. <laughs> you put your guard on that one. We'll they're, not found in, <laughs> they're found in museums and if you have a little look, they're on eBay. This oh, Hudson, that's Scott and Sons. So they're very worth. I mean, obviously, fact check this. This is just yes. me doing a quick little Google. But they started in 1886 okay. and they were very prolific at the time of 1914. So, I mean, oh. we don't know when they came to the yeah. front, but 
this tin could be older than the you think it is. is. In I think it's at the 1900s they started making tins. Okay, that would probably match when, when we started giving them all these prizes. Yeah, oh, that's and fascinating. Wow. One more little fact, yes. one, which it's I think is cool. really sort of quite quirky. They sent, um, they had a contract with Cadbury's to produce a chocolate box bearing a greeting from Queen Victoria, which they sent out to South Africa oh. in the 1900s. My goodness. So to, to the soldiers out there. So maybe somebody thought they didn't want a Cadbury tin, they wanted a people's so friend. Well, yeah. That's great. So, yeah. That's brilliant. These so, are uh, very, um, very big. Uh, collectible items well, that's just fantastic it's blown it open for us and i think for for me and i know for you angela yeah. that's the fun that we oh. we never stop finding no out we more. don't do we yeah. um we've had so much pleasure already preparing all our anniversary content because we keep finding out new things about the magazine and that's just another one there today i mean yeah. who knew that, that there was such a story behind this rusted old tin. I don't think um, the archive team will let it out of their sight again. We might not be allowed to take no. it out of the show. <laughs> but I think I just carry it around in the jelly pan. <laughs> it's a sort of priceless antique. <laughs> it's like the, the book, though, the book, uh, the 150th anniversary special. There yes. are so many things. You've been, you cannot stop flicking through it and finding something different, but also yeah. something so, if you love history or you're at all, you know, interested in anything to do with history, there are so many facts yeah. in there. I think what yeah. I like most about it is the snapshot it gives you of women's lives yes. throughout those 150 mm -hmm. years, how they've changed, and it's changed in so many ways um, in what we do um, as jobs and what happens in the home and mm -hmm. in the things that we buy. But do you know what hasn't changed? We still love our cup of tea. <laughs> there is a fact about tea that it's the most, um, it's something like a hundred and, I, you have to fact check these facts that I'm mm. giving you, but that it's the most drunk beverage in the UK. Mm -hmm. And if you think of when you go out on the street and how many coffee shops you yes, see, yes. to think that tea is still three times more, it's it's higher up yes. than, than coffee. But why isn't there a tea shop that, that yeah. sells lots and lots yeah. of tea? Yeah. There's a gap in the market. There is a gap, there? just tea. <laughs> and for, I know whenever I take my, my mum out, mm -hmm. um, her, her highlight is say we get a nice pot of tea there yes. and they oh, she knows who pays this she shows guaranteed yes. to get a good cup of tea it's also nice I, I noticed somebody saying that you don't not you don't get much loose tea mm -hmm. these days but when you go out for a really nice afternoon tea and you you get the loose tea and the strainer and the pot it makes it more of an occasion doesn't it, it does. when you use the strainer over your yeah, cup it really, really yeah does. so i understand your hot, hot, hot water to oh, yes. to get that last ounce of flavor absolutely <laughs> I could talk about tea all day, yeah. but this has made me want to go and make a cup. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah. But it was nice to work. This has been lovely, hasn't it? So yeah. if you have enjoyed this session, please look out for us on Facebook live on a Friday morning. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much for all your comments. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.